Hi everyone, welcome to today's video where we'll, we will be stripping and rebuilding these carbs on the GSXF 600. Uh, not too complicated, all you really need is a stair head screwdriver and a flat head screwdriver, a couple of simple tools. So I'm just going to be rebuilding one today because it's just a repeat procedure for doing the other ones. A couple of notes, do not separate these carbs unless you really have to because it can really upset things and especially do not remove the throttle position sensor because that can spell all kinds of trouble. So let's get started. I think we'll take off the top first to get out the diaphragm to inspect it. The screws are a little stuck, just give it a little tap. There we go. Just hold your finger down in this because there's a spring under here and can cause a slight bit of tension to pop the cap off, but nothing too major. There's nothing under here. On the 750 curbs, there is a little o ring here for an air passage, but not on the 600, so nothing to worry about. Spring is fine, no breaks in it. Just gently peel away the diaphragm and lift out the slide. Just make sure there's no scoring or bends in the needle. Need to give that a little clean up. And no tears in the diaphragm. If you want to remove the needle, there's a little white holder on here, it just pops out. There's a little spring and an o-ring, just be careful that's not lost. And then just push the needle up from below, and lift it out the top. And there's a little washer on top of that, just be careful it doesn't get lost either. You'll see on these curves that the little C-clip is on position 3 which is standard for these bikes. If you move the clip up, it'll make the bike leaner, obviously. So we don't want to do that, so we're putting on the aftermarket exhaust. So we'll get those cleaned up in a second. You flip the carb over and take out the four screws on the bottom. Hopefully nothing too nasty inside of here. Sometimes you can see red if there's any rust inside the tank. Yeah, not too bad, but there is some red material in there. Now to remove the float, just the star head screw. Just keep everything set to one side nicely so you know where all the screws go. So I'll just strip one carb at a time like I'm doing here. And then you always have a reference. Lift out the float. And take off your little stop. There's a very small ring around this where you can see where it's, it's probably the original ones. And it may not be sealing correctly. So just be careful of this pin as well, it doesn't fall out and get lost. Next, the seat. This tends to be a little stuck, so... A bit of persuasion, and out she comes. And this is only on by an o-ring, so this should come out pretty easy. There we go. That's it. 
There may be different sizes of these, but these ones say 23 on them, but the kit I ordered for this particular bike it all came together, so that's about it. Next we get our flathead. We can screw out the main jet. For some reason in these bikes, the main jet on cylinders 1 and 4 is 115 size, and 2 and 3 is 112.5. On the German, what they call the full power model, and the Hales Hands manual, they all have 115. So I have some more Jeff ordered to put them all to 115 to see how it behaves with this new exhaust with it breathing a little better, but may need to be changed again. Now when blowing these out, just use compressed air. Don't use a wire or anything like that because it can enlarge the hole very slightly and affect it a little bit. Same with the other two jets, just screw them out, don't get them mixed up. You know by the lower number is on this jet and the higher number is on the main jet. This one says 50 on it. noise is a very windy Easter day here. And this jet says 12.5. Right, now next I'm going to get these all cleaned up, cleaned inside the float bowl, and we'll get our new parts and get them on. Okay, so everything's cleaned out nicely inside there. Uh, this is the kit I'm going to be using for this bike, this 98 GSXF 600. I'll put a little link to that in the description below. The first part we're going to fit is the float needle, the seat for it here, the new seat. I'm just put a tiny bit of grease in this ring, just a grease that doesn't do any harm to rubber. This is actually the grease from the caliber kit. And it goes. Get the screw. This is the very short screw with the washer built on. Doesn't have to be too tight. The jets I have all cleaned out with some compressed air and they're completely fine. You just have a look through them to look through the light. See if we see light the whole way through. Again, don't over tighten these as they're easy damaged. Remember to check the jets, make sure it's the right one we're putting in here. The smaller of the two numbers this one and the bigger of the two numbers is the main jet. Now there is an o-ring in the kit for the holder for the jet. This little o-ring here, new o-ring on. We'll just have a little look down inside the hole. Everything looks fine. Remember after cleaning to give out any air passages you see you could blow it with compressed air. Make sure no more debris in there. 
Next, to get the float, make sure it's completely clean. Slide on the new needle. Carefully drop it in, lining up the pin. Get the screw. And again, just snug it up. Right, now as for measuring the float height on these bikes, it is recommended from the base of the carburetor to the top of the float, not to this flat line here. You can have them so that the float is pretty much level with this line, but it, it works out the same as 13mm at the top. Sorry. You want to have the carb sitting not so it's down like that in pressure and it'll just have it so it's just about touching the needle and no more. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that there, but that is spot on. If you can see that it's spot on 13 millimeters. The tolerance according to the hands manual is only plus or minus half a millimeter so not much tolerance but as usual to adjust that you can bend if it's sitting too low you bend the tab down whenever it's sitting upside down I guess of course and if it's too high up this way bend the tab up so once that's set and you're happy with that make sure everything looks okay now this bottom ring on the float bowl can be a little hard to get in, so I put a smear of grease around it. Again, grease that won't harm rubber, and that'll help it stick in very nicely. Make sure everything looks okay. I've seen these crack down on the bottom here too from over tightening, so just check that. Now, the next thing you may want to check is the idle adjustment, the idle the fuel air ratio, idle, idle adjustment there, fuel ratio, sorry. You can note how many turns it was in if you want to screw it in full. Just pop this out. You can just be careful. Check the end of it, this one's a little black but there's no physical damage to it yeah it just wipes off my fingers make sure the spring looks okay put down inside the hole a little bit of blow out pop the spring back on and pop it down in you really don't want to over tighten this because you can damage the point of it, you can damage it anywhere actually, it's just soft like the jets. Screw it the full way in until it just about stops like that. And then the standard setting for the European models at least and for most others is two and a quarter turns out. If you want to hold a little your finger on where the screwdriver points to, so half, one, two, sorry one and a half two, two and a quarter. So that's that. Now next, flip the carb over. Make sure no debris inside. If you want to give it a blow out, give it a blow out. Little fly stuck in there. Now you have to cleaning the, fly, the slide and the jet. You can just make sure that little washer isn't lost. Just drop it down in very carefully. I hold my finger on the bottom here to stop it coming through in case it drops too fast and the washer pops off. Just a little slide down in gently. And there's the new O ring for the little holder on, on the new pack, which I've already changed. Simply just slide that in, make sure the spring lines up and pops down on a little click and you know it's in place whenever the, you can feel the spring acting on the needle. 
Brooks can only go in one way, so we can't get mixed up. Let's make sure it lines up with the hole. And that's it. Just remember if you are on the 750 model to change this little ring here, but as I say, it's not on the 600. Get our spring pop it in place. This can only go on the one way around too. There's little locator pins here and on the other hole. Again, don't have to be over tightened. That is pretty much it. Unless you want to remove the choke plunger. Uh, you may see that there's a screw missing here, but that's actually the way they are for some reason. Maybe originally they had four in and it started binding up or something. But if you want to check your choke plungers, just remove these screws. Gonna remove one of these to show you. Generally, you can't get a socket on here because unless it's a very small socket, just carefully use needle nose pliers. That's all there is to it. This little plunger with a seal in there. Not much to just make sure there's no damage on the end of it. The O ring on here comes in the new kit. Bit fiddly to remove, but there we go. the new one on. That's it. Let's pop this back in. Just tighten it up gently with a needle nose pliers, it's only plastic. There we go. And fitting is just the reverse of the removal procedure, just make sure it lines in with all the little plungers and hooks over the bars and put in the three screws. And that is your basic rebuild on the 600 GSXF. Uh, if you really want to strip them apart, you can just say be very careful getting things lined up again and This can really throw off calibrations, but that's your basic service done So I'm gonna get these cleaned up a little bit better and get it back on the bike and whenever it comes time to do the uh, balancing, balancing of the curbs, this is where you put the pipes on as I'm sure you know just these four little ports here, this is the one that goes to the valve in the tank to stop the fuel they start to feel moving, sorry. So yeah, hopefully that was helpful to you. Thanks very much for watching. Please remember if you're first time here to like and subscribe. And join me again for the next one. Thanks.